Okay, so this is going to be a review for next episode of The Flash. And uh, what did I think of this episode? Uh, it was pretty cool, especially that ending, which I can't wait to geek out about. Um, <laughs> I, um, I really did like this episode. I really did like it, but it, it, there's not a lot to talk about. For, there isn't, like, in terms of uh, major stuff, there isn't a lot to talk about. Having said that, though, there is some cool points when they bring in a certain character at the end, as well as they, the character they have in here. So, Barry... It, so it all starts out with a bomb going off in a building, and Barry rushing over there to save everyone. You know, he finally figures out how to run up a building through a little mathematics. And <laughs> this is where he also runs into Iris as the, as the Flash, as the streak, as people have been calling him. She, you know, now she can't help herself but keep blogging about this. Can I just say Iris is... Not, I like Iris West in the comics, but the actress they have for Iris West in the, in the TV show just gets on my nerve. It's kind of like Laurel. Why do all the main love interests for superheroes are, like, the most damaged... Uh, not even damaged, really. Like, they just have no no idea what to do with those characters while the male character... While, you know, Caitlin Snow has a good character there. There are a few other female characters, especially, like, in Arrow, you've got Felicity and, you know, uh, some of the villains as well in here. But I just feel like there are, you know, W, you know, uh, CW just does not know what to do with some of their uh, female actors, especially the lead female actors. They don't know what to do with that ca character. And I don't really want to blame the actress. I want to blame more of the writing, if anything else, because they can have, you know, I've seen these people in these in these shows have good acting moments. But for the most part, they don't know. I don't think they, uh, the writers know what to do with them. But anyway, yeah, so now the whole underlying thing of Iris going now, now that she's seen the streak, she wants to, you know, do more. She wants to keep, uh, to keep up with the blogging. And of course, this upsets Joe and Barry as well. Meanwhile, we, uh, it, uh, meanwhile, after the explosion, after the bombing hits, the military comes in, led by General Wade Eiling. Now, for those who, who that name sounds familiar, Wade Eiling is known as the General in DC Comics. He was an enemy of the Atom and the Justice League. You probably know him best from the Justice League Unlimited episode, Patriot Act. And in there, and in the comics as well, Eiling becomes a giant gorilla monster, a giant, like, Hulk beast. In the comics, in the, in the uh, actual, co in the uh, comic books, it was, in Eiling's case, he was, uh, he was dying of a brain tumor, so he transferred his consciousness into the sh into the Shaggy Man, shaved it all, all the hair off, and became something new. Yeah, <laughs> that's the comic book story. So I'm kind of wondering. And also, we have Cl yeah, Wade Island's being played by Clancy Brown, to which I'm th to which I said out loud, "Wow, DC just won't let you go, huh, Clancy?" <laughs> And it, it's so cool because we all know him best for uh, in DC in the DC universe as Lex Luthor, and I I really like this. Uh, I really like uh, his performance as uh, Wade Eiling. He comes off as pretty terrifying, uh, someone who just looks like a force to be reckoned with, and of course has all that military st uh, military uh, backing him up. I'm really hoping that maybe what will happen is that maybe there'll be a scene between. I'm really hoping Wade Eiling and Amanda Waller meet because they're both in the same universe, and I can see them. They work together a lot in the comics and in the Justice League Unlimited show, so I could definitely see Eiling, you know, getting resources from Waller herself. But <clears throat> so yeah, we have Cl so they're looking for some, you know they won't discuss what's going on, but however Barry goes looking for this. Uh, uh, goes looking for what they're after first, and it turns out to be a woman who has the metahuman ability to blow things up on on contact with them. And it is pla she's known as Plastique from the comics. Uh, she was the uh, white in the comics. She in the pre fifty two. She was the wife of Captain Adam. Short time though. But anyway. Uh, uh, so yeah. Barry runs into her first, and then it turns... Yeah, this is where they discover she gets... Whenever she touches something, it'll explode. And it touches his suit, and it blows up. And I love the moment when he goes back to the, uh, to his, to the hideout... Uh, to the uh, to Star Labs, and he's just like... And Cisco's like, where's my suit? It blew up. You blew up my suit? Yeah, so apparently there were three, uh, three suits made, so yeah, there's one gone... Two, uh, yeah, only two left. 
I'm kind of hoping somewhere down the line, I'm always, I, I haven't talked about this, actually. I haven't really talked about this. What I'd really love to ha- to see in this show, and it's probably going to happen because, well, Jeff Johns is in charge, and Jeff Johns is the world's, lar- is the world's largest DC fanboy, and I mean that with the nicest intent. I really want Barry to have the flash ring. You know, he's the, the little ring he has, that he has his whole suit in a, in a uh, little ring. So I just want to see like that, like the like him get the flash ring, and then whenever he needed, you know, he gets into his suit, he can just shoot out of the ring. I'm really hoping we get the flash ring suit. I really want it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, they managed to bring plastic, you know, bring plastique to uh, bring to bring her to Star Labs, and it's the first time that you know the first metahuman they've run into that doesn't want to kill everybody. She doesn't want to destroy Star Labs. She's just scared and alone. It's kind of, They kind of go with the whole rogue thing with her, is that she can't touch anything or it'll explode rather than absorb people's power and kill... But it kills them either way. This is just a lot more quicker and a, pro- and a lot more painful. So I really like the, um... Like, uh, just all the... Like, Barry trying to help her and trying to... Uh, say all this stuff, and she's like, uh, well, if you ever had the chance to have your, pa- you know, would you have your powers re- taken from you? No, nope, I'm good. And, yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I don't want it, because I think that a friend of mine said that these pa- uh, uh, my, these powers chose me. So we cut back, and there was a tracer bullet planted on uh, Plastique, and what happens is that uh, Eiling comes in with a whole group of men, and uh, <laughs> Wells is there telling him, "Look, Wade, we worked in the past on the it worked in the past, but I'm you know I'm not going to hand over the girl to you. You know she as long as she's here, she's fine. You know she's safe here. And I real uh, yeah, and I love there's a little moment where it's like if only we could reverse some of the th- you know reverse some things in the past or something like that. But he definitely puts a little emphasis on reverse." So yeah, he's probably it. So yeah, H. So yeah, Doctor Wells is more than likely, you know, he is more than likely, re- yeah, Hunter Zolomon, you know, Zoom. And it also kind of yeah, we all kind of know this at this point that yeah, he's he's Professor Zoom. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. So. Meanwhile, the whole blog thing happens. The reason why I'm not talking much about the blog, you know, Iris and her blog thing, is because she knows this is, stu- you know, not that you know everyone else thinks this is a bad idea. Because there are people out there who want to hurt the, fl- um, who want to hurt the Flash. And if they and if they think Iris knows something about her, they'll c- go out and hurt. Uh, they'll go out and hunt her down. So I do like that scene with. Uh, between Iris and uh, Barry when he's in the Flash costume. It also has a new uh, ability with his powers that I didn't even think of that the Flash could do. He hyper-accelerated his vocal cords to sound like he, this whole echoing thing. I, re- I really like that. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of hoping that maybe when they're, te- you know, in that team-up episode between uh, Barry and Oliver, they both have the, the uh, their both voices changed, and <laughs> Lance is just like, Oh, jeez. Can anyone just talk normal around here? Anyway. So, yeah, the, the, the Iris is still going to keep logging despite Barry uh, trying to warn her otherwise. And it's really, you know, uh, Barry's trying to be nice about it. And she's like, look, I'm doing this all, I'm blogging just for you. And Barry's like, ah, uh, no, you can't do that, please. And meanwhile... Uh, Plastique is just in the base, and Eiling, uh, not Eiling, uh, Wells comes in and pretty much says to, uh, says to her, you know, you know what you should do, soldier. One last mission, because you know you you, uh, you know these pe- you know these metahumans need to be protected. They need to be defended at all costs, especially from people like Eiling. And through that, you know, Plastique gets the idea. It pretty much gets the mission to uh, from Wells to go out and kill Eiling. And Barry arrives back and see that Plasti- you know Plastique is gone, and the bo- and you know she's gone out out to give herself up to Eiling, or so we think. And through that, through uh, through that, we had 
you know, plastique look like looking like she's going to give herself up. But nope, she makes uh, miniature bombs to throw at people. You know, throw at the enemy. Nearly kills, I you know, nearly kills Eiling. Uh, flat, uh, you know, Barry comes in, uh, stops her from doing anything serious. But then Eiling shoots her and kills her, making her going, uh, making her probably explode. And this is where we get the flash, uh, the first time in this show for the flash to run on the water. What I also like about this is that it's really cool how they. Uh, how they pretty much mix the, uh, you know, put some science into the Flash's speed. I really do love that. Uh, how they, manage, you know, measure how fast he has to go to run up a wall or run, you know, run across water. I really did like that. And it's really sad to see Plastique die because she just wanted to be left alone. She just wanted to get help. So, yeah, it all ends with that. You know, Iris and Barry are no longer friends. Barry's not coming around into the house anymore. Uh, Iris is still, you know, an un, uh, you know, still not a likable character yet for me. And yeah, then we get the, you know, at the end of the uh, scene, at the end of the episode, we get a lovely scene between Eiling pretty much telling Doctor Wells, "Look, I want, you know, I would love to, you know, I saw a guy who could run and in, in the run as fast as a blink of an eye, and I want that power." And and I'm thinking to myself, uh, Doctor Wells, we should team up again. And, uh, you know, I, you know, he, you know, Wells says to Eiling, you know, that's not going to happen after what happened the last time we worked together. I'm really hoping to see what goes down further with it, because they did talk about the first time Eiling and uh, Wells worked together was on a machine that could help give uh, telepathic abilities to someone for uh, interrogation purposes. And I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder what the test monkey was. <laughs> Yeah. So, anyway, uh, I you know Eiling says, "Look, I'm going to come back here with soldiers if if need be." And I and Wells responds back, and I can have a thing. I can have the press down here even faster. Do not you know threaten me again, Eiling, or I will end you and not just your career. So that that happened, and of course. Uh, Eiling's like, whatever, I'm, I'm backing off for now. And then we get a flashback to Eiling and Wells yelling about a patient at one another, arguing over a patient, and Eiling's forced to leave by Wells again. And, and uh, that's the scene where Wells walks in to talk to the, you know, subject at, in hand. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry, he's gone now. He's, he's not going to come back. I have, but I have a different future in mind for you. And we see him. Gorilla Grodd! Yes, we get our first appearance of Grodd. And it looks like a guy in a gorilla suit. Albeit a pretty good gorilla suit. Mind you, it's a pretty good gorilla suit. But yeah, we got Grodd! <laughs> our first uh, scene of Grodd. And it was in a flashback. But yeah, really excited to see you know what happens with Grodd now. I am really curious to see what's going to happen next with Grodd. And of course, we now know, as we all pretty much know, yeah, he's Reverse Flash. He is pretty much the, you know, Wells is pretty much Hunter Zolomon, and is probably going to whip, more than likely whip a lot of ass. He is, uh, we, we're really starting to see Dr. Wells' true color here. You know, from manipulating Plastique to, you know, create, pretty much helping to create Grodd, as well as a few other things. This show has just been completely awesome through and through. I cannot wait for uh, next week's episode. Uh, hell, I can't. I always get excited when a new episode of The Flash shows up. I am always excited for that. But anyway, you guys tell me. What did you guys think of this episode? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Are you guys excited for Grodd coming? And, uh, yeah. Anyway, once again, I hope you all enjoyed this review. And, yeah, I'm out.